In the morning in the forest, there was a man called Mickey Schalthobe. He took his family on vacation to a villa. There were his wife, Sophie, his teenage daughter, Janelle, and a son, Jake. It was shown that his daughter was using an inhaler, indicating that she had asthma. Unfortunately, Janelle then complained about how remote the area that they went and that there would be no internet connection, which then would make the whole holiday feel boring. Long story short, they finally arrived at the villa. This villa was descended from Mickey's father, and it is located in the forest. Once they got in, they found a lot of scattered foods everywhere and disgusting smells. Mickey then assured his family that it's probably Noah, his brother, who did it. Sophie felt irritated. She told Mickey that at least Noah could clean the place up before he got back to the city. After they done arguing, Janelle and Jake, looking at the pictures of Mickey and Noah, they were then having a little nostalgia about Mickey and Noah. By the afternoon, Mickey and his family were having a shooting practice. Sophie, that used to be a shooting athlete, showed her skillful shooting act. Janelle and Jake cheered their mother because of it. Jake then tried to shoot just like her mother, but he missed his shoot. At night, the family gathered at the living room and Jake was trying to turn on the TV on the villa. He tried and tried, but then he failed. Mickey then offered his assistance to Jake to fix the TV, while Sophie and Janelle were waiting by the couch. But then Mickey found something, and he told Janelle and Jake to go to their room. Janelle and Jake, who refused at first, then do as their father told them. When they were gone, Sophie asked about what happened and Mickey showed Sophie that there were two big bags, one with a lot of cash in one of them and also a huge amount of drugs on the other bag. By then, Mickey and Sophie realized that there was something clearly wrong has happened around there. Then, Jake and his sister rushed down and told their parents that they found something under their bed. Mickey then looked and checked about the thing his children mentioned. He then found Noah, who was already dead, inside a body bag. Knowing that there's something clearly wrong, Mickey and Sophie then rushed and told their children to leave the villa immediately. Once they got out, their car war hijacked. Mickey then rushed and told his family to go inside and locked all the doors. The children was panicking, and he still tried to calm them down. By the morning, while Mickey and Sophie was guarding, Sophie noticed that their car that was being hijacked was arrived in front of the villa. Mickey then got out seeing who was messing with him and his family. As Mickey getting closer by the car, he saw Kane and Franco. Kane was the captain of a special task force. During this conversation, it was then known that Mickey used to be a major of a special task force, while Kane and Franco was his subordinate during his time in the army. Kane then told Mickey that he would let Mickey and his family go as long as Mickey give them the two bags inside the villa. Mickey refused his offering by told Kane that he didn't see or know anything about those bags. And then Kane threatened Mickey to not mess with him or else they would have the same fate as Noah who turned out. He also used to serve in the military. After that, Kane decided to go away for some times. When Mickey went back inside the villa, Sophie asked why Mickey didn't just give away those bags to Kane and Franco. Mickey then explained whether they give the bags or not, they would still be dead either way. After that, Mickey told his family to get ready because the only way for them is to run away to the inside of the forest. They then sneaked out to go further to the forest through the back door. All four of them then ran and ran deeper. Turned out, Kane, who just got back to the villa, brought a whole mercenary army to kill Mickey and his family. Unfortunately for them, the villa was already vacant. Kane realized that Mickey and his family were already ran away to the forest. The next thing Kane did was giving a short brief to the mercenaries. He told them only to hunt Mickey, while Mickey's family were only just bonuses for them. One of them asked Kane why they should do all the work only to hunt and kill one person. Kane then explained that Mickey was a skillful army, and he told them that Mickey was greater than five men of special force. And then the other army said that Kane should have got rid of Mickey by himself, unless Kane was really a weak person. Hearing that, Kane pointed gun straight away to his head and scared him. Something that seemed to be a joke truly was not. Franco then stabbed that mercenary from behind and killed him because of what he said towards Kane. After that, Kane asked to the rest of them if there's something that they want to say to him. Next, Kane told two of them to guard around the villa. Along with that, Mickey and his family went deeper and deeper into the forest. 
He then told them to rest under a small cave while he went to hide the bags. After hide the bags, Sophie then asked Mickey about what they're going to do next. Mickey told her that he have to kill Kane for before he get them. Before he left, Mickey told his son, Jake, to protect his mother and sister. After that, Mickey ran to hunt Ken's group. Inside the forest, one of Ken's men, Phil, was panicking because he saw something suspicious by the forest where he was patrolling. Not so long after, Mickey came out of the bushes and stabbed him to his death. Mickey took his radio and connected to Kane. Mickey told him that his men just lessened by one. Kane was getting angrier, and he told Mickey that he'd kill the rest of his family. Not so long after, one of Kane's men found Janelle Inhaler. Back to Sophie, she and her children were getting worried about Mickey. Jake then told his mom that he would went after his father and helped him. Sophie then forbid him because it would just make him more vulnerable to danger. Jake insisted that he would went after his dad, and after that, Mickey arrived. Mickey then told him to always do what his mother said. At night, one of the Kane's men felt frustrated because of the mosquitoes that keep biting him. When he was unaware of his surrounding, Mickey came out and punched him in the face then stabbed him. Only nine Kane's men left. On the other side, Janelle's asthma then relapsed. Sophie and Jake couldn't find her inhaler. Jake recklessly decided to find the inhaler while Sophie tried to take care of Janelle. The next morning, Jake seemed regretted his decision, and he was lost inside the forest. On the other side, Kane told his men to spread out to find Mickey. After that, while one of the Kane's men looking for his hunt in the forest, Mickey attacked him from the bushes. He successfully getting rid of the man's gun, and they got into a fight with each other. During the fight, a red-haired woman came out of nowhere, and she pointed her gun at Mickey while he held hostage of the earlier man. She told Mickey to let go of her friend and Mickey pushed him until the red-haired woman missed her shot and killed her friend instead. Mickey then ran and find a way to corner that woman. They then got into a fierce fight with bare hands and Mickey then killed the woman by pierced her on a branch of a tree. As the day went by, Sophie and Janelle started to get worried about Jake. Little did they know, Jake was lost. Janelle then told her mother to look after Jake and they both went to look after Jake into the forest carefully. Jake, who had no clue about where he was, keep shouting and calling for his father. His mouth then got shut by the hand of his father. They hide, and Mickey felt frustrated because Jake couldn't stick to what Mickey had said earlier. Mickey and Jake then realized that they were cornered by two mercenaries, one a black man and one wore a black suit. Mickey then told Jake to spread out, in running to distract the mercenaries, and he told Jake to run to the west side. Unfortunately, Mickey could only distract one of them. A man wore a black suit. He ran after Mickey, and they got into a fight in the river, and the man in the black suit almost killed Mickey by drowning him into the water. Mickey then saw his gun that got dropped into the river, and he shot it to kill the man in the black suit. Mickey then knew that the black man went after Jake. He immediately ran after his son who was in danger. It was true that Jake was in trouble. The black man then cornered Jake and beat him up. He asked about the bag. Fortunately, at the same time, Mickey came and had a gun on his hand. He pointed at the mercenary while he then held Jake as hostage. He then threatened to kill Jake if Mickey didn't drop his gun. Mickey, who got no other choices, then had to follow his instruction. The mercenary then beat Jake while he was distracted by pointing a gun at Jake. Mickey then quickly took his gun and killed him. On the other side, Sophie and Janelle, who was inside the forest looking for Jake, got caught by one of the Kane's men. They then brought into the villa where Kane and his men were there. Sophie and Janelle couldn't do anything anymore. Kane then talked to Mickey through the radio, and he told Mickey to give up because he already got his wife and daughter. At the villa, Kane then asked Sophie sarcastically if he could have an intercourse with her daughter, Janelle. Sophie then threatened to kill Kane if he ever laid his finger on Janelle. Kane then got mad by her answer, and he slapped Sophie hard on her face. One of the mercenary then told Kane to act professional and focused on their mission, but Kane, who felt mocked, immediately put some bullets in him. Back to Mickey, he told Jake to stay put by the river and stay there while he told Jake that he's going to save his mother and sister. At first, Jake didn't agree with what his father said. He told Mickey that he wanted to stay by his side. 
However, Mickey then made clear of his words this time that Jake really need to do as he said because the rest of the family was in danger. Not so long after, Mickey finally arrived at the villa and he tried to distract two of Kane's men who were guarding the villa. Mickey then managed to kill those two guys by himself and he quickly ran in front of the villa. He shot his gun to let Kane knew that he was there. Inside there were only Kane and his trusted man, Franco, who got Sophie held hostage on his hand. Kane then once again asked about the bag. He told Mickey if he didn't give the bag, he would kill Mickey's wife and daughter. But then Mickey answered if Kane ever did that, he would also kill himself so that they could never find the bag. Finally, they got into a deal where Mickey could pick one of the hostages to be released, while Franco followed Mickey to where he hid the bags. Sophie, who felt desperate, then told Mickey to choose Janelle over her, but instead, Mickey chose his wife. Franco quickly pushed Sophie towards Mickey, and Sophie got angry because at the same time, they have to sacrifice Janelle. But then, Mickey explained that he told Jake to wait by the river, where Mickey and Sophie used to play when they were still a child. By this, only Selfie knew where the exact spot of the river while Janelle did not. It would be safer that way. After that, Sophie went after Jake at the river while Franco started to follow Mickey to the location of the bag and left Kane and Janelle by the villa. During their walk, Franco got connected to Kane's radio and he told Franco to kill Mickey once he got the bag. When Mickey showed him the location of the bag and Franco got distracted, Mickey started to attack him. Mickey then got into a fight once again. Franco using his knife while Mickey using his only bare hands, Mickey once again still managed to end Franco's life. Mickey then quickly went back to the villa to save Janelle. Meanwhile, Sophie finally managed to find Jake who waited patiently by the river. At the villa, Kane was only left with Janelle. Kane then persuaded Janelle that if Janelle willing to have an intercourse with him, he wouldn't kill her. Janelle, who cried and felt desperate, started to get up onto Kane. Janelle then got into her senses and hardly pushed Kane and ran away from the villa. Kane immediately ran after Janelle into the forest. Fortunately, Mickey then arrived and he tried to shoot Kane but failed. They got into gunfight and chasing until Kane was able to snatch Janelle and held her hostage. Mickey couldn't do anything about this. When Kane was going to shot Mickey, Janelle warded her arm off Kane and had Kane miss his shot until he ran out of bullets. Sophie and Jake, on the other side, could hear the gunshot. And then Kane bravely challenged Mickey to fight with only bare hands and Mickey agreed. They then got into a fierce fight, once again, and left Janelle on the ground, unconscious. Unfortunately, Mickey got tired from the earlier fights he had. Kane then managed to take the gun Mickey dropped earlier and about to shot him while Mickey lost all of his energy. When Kane was about to shoot his shot, suddenly, a bullet then planted into Kane's chest. It was Sophie who shot Kane from far away using a sniper. And then, to finish his act, Mickey then broke Kane's neck and he's dead. After the Schalhaub family got together in the morning, they decided to give Noah a proper burial before they left. Mickey put the bags on to the back of his truck, and Sophie asked him about what he's going to do with the bag. He's going to take the drugs to the official and take the money for more holiday, Mickey answered. Sophie somehow agreed to that brilliant plan, and then they left for another holiday.